Aramna's Pure. Various topics related to this lesson is matter Aramna's Pure. We have covered introductory topic, we have covered two types of mixtures, differences between them and some common properties related to them we have completed that is homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. Then we have seen three types of solutions that is true solution, then suspension and colliding solution along with their properties and some important uh, characteristics of these three solutions we have seen. Now today onwards we are going to start the separation techniques of the mixture. Students as you are knowing this mixtures uh, are composed of two components okay? and these two components are not mixed together by the chemical reactions. Right? Chemical reactions we have not followed them to combine them together. When the substances or elements are combined together by chemical reaction, the compound is getting formed. Here mixture has formed. So to separate the components of mixture, we have to follow the techniques, also physical techniques we have to follow to separate the components from the mixture. So here we are going to talk about two types of mixtures that is homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture and the separation techniques, physical separation techniques we are going to follow for it. Okay? So the important technique today we are going to see that is evaporation technique. But here uh, before going ahead, I would like to know you why we require to separate the components of the mixture. Well, these mixtures are made up of two or three components we are going to remain. Why we have to separate them? The first thing, very simple thing is that we want to separate them because we want the components back. Right? Simple thing, we want the components back. And the second thing is that if some impurities are present in it, then we can remove these impurities by the separation techniques. So there are two uh, major things for that set we have to uh, follow the separation technique. Separation technique we follow for what we want components back, very simple. And the second thing is that we want uh, to remove some impurities present in it. So these are the two reasons to separate the mixtures. So there are various uh, methods to separate the mixtures. What are those methods? First, just now I said you evaporation which we are going to see now itself. Likewise, filtration technique, centrifugation technique, uh, distillation technique, fractional distillation technique, chromatography technique, crystallization technique. So, various kinds of uh, physical techniques or physical process methods we follow to get our component back from the mixtures. Right? There are two kinds of mixtures. Separate the component of the solution. So, students, in the first lesson, we have seen. 
number one. But here I will revise you so that it will be more easier, easier for you to understand the evaporation technique. So here we have seen evaporation takes place, evaporation can take place at any temperature. Okay, and evaporation is the surface phenomenon. Only surface water is getting evaporated. Okay, so here in the true solution, true solution means salt solution, copper sulfate solution, uh, sugar solution. This so, so, true solution what happens? Uh, there are two components, solute and solvent. So out of this solvent is a volatile compound. Or, sorry, solvent is a volatile substance. While solute is a non-volatile substance. This the uh, two things you should understand that solute is non-volatile substance. Non-volatile and volatile uh, the concept will be clear. Means which can evaporate easily at room temperature. The substance is which can evaporate easily at room temperature. Such substances are called as a volatile substances. But have you seen any? Have you seen anywhere that salt is getting evaporated at room temperature? No, it doesn't take place. Right? It doesn't take place. It does not evaporate at room temperature. Then what is evaporating at room temperature? The water can evaporate at room temperature. It does not require a specific amount of temperature. At any temperature, because we have seen in the definition itself, the process of changing water into its vapor at any temperature. So here, solute cannot evaporate, but solvent can be evaporated. So first thing you should understand volatile and the non-volatile. Okay, so evaporation is depend on various factors. What are those factors? That is by increasing wind speed, we can increase the rate of the evaporation. See students, whenever hurriedly you are trying to come to the school in the morning and your mother is offering you a hot milk or coffee to you, then what do you do? You are keeping it under the fan, right? Why you have kept it under the fan? Because after keeping it under the fan, you, you are able to evaporate that milk earlier. Okay? And so that now it, the milk is drinkable for you. So this is the first factor on which the rate of evaporation is dependent. That is wind speed. If you will try to increase wind speed, then the rate of evaporation will be get increased. Right? Uh, for wind speed, means under the fan also in a rainy season, we keep our clothes under the fan. So it can dry up earlier. Drying up means what? Letting the amount of water particle out. That is in the evaporation. Simple. The second uh, factor on which the rate of evaporation is dependent. That is by increasing temperature. At any temperature, evaporation can take place. But if you increase the temperature, the rate of evaporation will get increased. Okay? So, your mother is following sun drying technique in the month of the uh, April, May, and uh, March. Why she is following? Why she has chosen these months only? Summer season, why she has chosen for the sun drying to give her uh, sunlight proper for your. For pulses, powers, peoples, uh, various jetties, jacks. Why she is doing in that particular month? Because she wants to remove the water particle from that food particle. Okay, then only we can keep it for a long time. If the water content will remain into that, uh, uh, if water content will remain in that, then what can happen? It, it will be the particle, the microorganisms, and my, microorganisms will uh, decompose it. Okay. Will decay so that your mother is uh, uh, drying up this all the substances, this all the food materials in the month of uh, April, uh, May, and uh, March. Okay, so sunrise is what? It's increasing temperature. So this is the third factor in way, uh, on which the uh, increasing temperature increases the rate of evaporation. Now the fourth is what? Decreasing humidity. First, try to clear the concept of humidity for you. Humidity comes what? The content of water into the air. In the rainy season, what happens? The water content into the air is more. So our clothes are not drying up fast. Understood? Then what do we do? We are keeping them uh, in a uh, we are keeping them such clothes in uh, under the fan at night. At night we keep them under the fan to dry up fast. Because humidity is more in the atmosphere, in the air, humidity is more and uh, water vapor are already more. So where this water vapor would go? So humidity, if humidity could increase, then the water which is present, 
into the hair will be more and so we cannot dry up our clothes earlier. Understood? So these are the factors on which the rate of the evaporation depends. As well as one factor by increasing the surface area. By increasing surface area also we can increase the rate of evaporation. See whenever again I am going to give the same example for you. Currently you want to come to the school or somewhere else for play or the playground you want to go earlier and your mother is offering again drink for you and electricity is not there. Then what uh, uh, option you are choosing for it? What do you do? You are putting that milk into the saucer and then you drink it. Understood? When you drink it, that at that time that milk is colder. Why it becomes cold? Because we have increased the surface area. So these are the factors on which the rate of the evaporation depends. Understood? So, so this technique, how can we follow to to separate the particles of true solution? Means how can we separate the particles of true solution uh, that is solute and solvent? Already I told you the solvents are uh, particles which can uh, which are volatile means which can evaporate, while the particles which are solute cannot evaporate. So through the uh, now we will explain, we explain you the process of evaporation with the help of this diagram. See students, if you will uh, look at the setup of this diagram, you will be able to see first there is a pulse burner. But we can offer the uh, spirit lamp also. Spirit lamp is also alright for it. But if you want to the rate of uh, process faster, then we can utilize the pulse burner. Uh, beside the pulse burner or over the pulse burner, you can see the tripod stand. Right? There, there should be a proper stand on which we have to keep one uh, beaker. So that there is a tripod stand. After it, there is a wire box which is avoiding the direct contact of the flame to the liquid. Above the wire box, there is a beaker in which our water, salt solution, uh, salt plus water is kept. Okay? And we have started boiling it for the solution. Now you will be able to see as the temperature of that uh, solution will get increasing, the slowly slowly the level of the water will get reduced. So, once, only once the level of the water will not get reduced. First the water will become warm, then it will reach to the boiling point and slowly slowly the water will start boiling and then the content of the water, the amount of the water will slowly slowly go down the height of the water will get decreased. And at last, what will happen, students, the particles or some crystals you will be able to observe. And those crystals are nothing but our salt. Understood, students? So, this process of getting crystals back, so this process is also called as a crystallization process. As we have got our crystals back from the solution, two solutions we have, two solutions we have, back, we have got back our crystals. So this process is also called as a crystallization process. Do you get student this crystallization process? Okay, shall we go ahead now? This crystallization process, evaporation technique or this crystallization process is mostly followed to gain a salt from the sea water. Okay, but here we are not going to provide the external heat by the uh, nature's heat, by the sunlight only or by the heat of the sun only the water evaporates and we get a salt from it. Understood? But what happens? The difference between the crystallization and the evaporation is that before going for the crystallization, that solution is washed many times. Uh, and then it means we are trying to remove the impurities by the filtration techniques. And after filtration, whatever the filtrate would remove, okay, that filter is allowing it to cool. Understood? And then whenever the filtrate 
solid state and means solid is mixed with the water we get a ink that is black ink. If you have a red ink mix, red dye is used here to make this red ink. If you have blue ink, then blue dye is used to make a blue ink. Mostly we use blue ink while writing black and blue is mostly used. But we used to write on a high board all kinds of inks. Okay. So this ink bottles means this ink is one kind of what? Solution. But as compared to the salt solution or as compared to the uh, sugar solution, this ink is little bit, means its consistency, if you see, the consistency is little bit thicker. This is uh, uh, ink, bottles or ink, which is present in the water is little bit thicker than other solution. So if we provide direct heat for it, then it may work. Understood? Means we will not get uh, our ink back. So that we are avoiding to provide direct heat for this solutions of the uh, ink. So then what process we follow? See in our book also properly the process is given. But here once again I would like to explain you. Again the same setup is arranged. Here one five watt stand, again one one set burner. Again there is a wire pass about it. The beaker is kept which contain water and above the beaker the evaporating disk is kept. Okay? And in that evaporating disk our ink is kept which we want to separate which has to be separated that is kept on the evaporating disk and we will uh, try providing heat for the liquid after some time what would happen as uh, we will provide heat it first of all it will become calm and it will start boiling that time what happens the particles the particles of solvent will get evaporated because these particles are volatile as they will as this particle is volatile this will go into the atmosphere, atmosphere and we will get our ink dye. This, whichever ink you will keep, that uh, dye will be kept. If we keep black ink here, we will get a black dye on. So, this is an uh, important evaporation technique which is followed for the uh, true solution. It is the homogeneous mixture. This technique is followed and the name of that technique is evaporation and crystallization. Crystallization technique name is given as we are getting our crystals 